Put his poor fucking third baby mama having to moan his name. Yeah. People yeah. moan names? Some people moan names. I like when people say my name. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Matt's <laughs> fine. If I hope they're not thanking me. That feels, <laughs> that feels transactional. I feel like one yeah. of us doesn't want to be there if you're saying thank you. Oh, oh <laughs> thanks, Matt. <laughs> so, uh, this is bad. 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 to drag out whores. No. And that's and then, actually what we kind of brought you on the podcast to talk about is whether or not you believe that racism exists. I think that it's bad. Yeah, for sure. If it does exist. If, if <laughs> racism. <laughs> listen, yeah. If, if, if it does exist. exist it's bad. It's no not. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It's like Slender Color. Man, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you talk about it, it's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It really is like Slender Man. It's Wait, like, is Slender Man the thing that those two girls like stab their best friend like a hundred times? Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that was so cool. It, like, I guess, yeah. <laughs> The whole idea of the Slenderman thing is like, it, it, if you talk about it or believe in it, it becomes real. Yeah. Okay, well, let's not yeah. talk about it because I don't like horror. No, neither. <laughs> well, are you scared? No, oh, I get scared so easy. Yeah. I watched a TikTok one time and it like, like literally like kept me up at night for like a what week. Was, what was it just? It was this weird audio of like, it was like staticky and it was like, if you see somebody who looks like you, turn the other way. And it's like a normal girl walking out of her shower and then she just, see, I get goosebumps talking about it, dude. I get so scared. <laughs> I get so scared. And then like, there's like a banister in between two of the th the things on the stair it's her face but it's like smiling really creepy and like there's a shadow over it and it just like the static just gets louder and louder and louder and then it just stops but it freaked me out like good enough where like i legit had trouble falling asleep that Whoa. that feels so specific towards you because i'm interested that you brought that up because i feel like you guys do look like a lot of people and people have been saying mm -hmm. that you're him. I, and by, which, by the way, I want to say this. So, it's so funny. I've been thinking about this all week because I've been like, wow, it clearly shows how low of insecurity I have because he told me that. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I cannot yeah. believe. I mean, how bad this new guy gets to town. He just wants to do comedy. Everyone's like, everyone's saying that I look like this fat faggot in town. Are you kidding me? I'm like, he probably fucking hates his life. No, no, no. It happened. I mean, it happened. I was here uh, looking for a house like a month ago. And it was right whenever Dylan won Austin's Funniest. And, like, three or four people came up to me, like, in the darkness of, like, a show. And were like, congratulations. Congratulations. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck are these people? <laughs> like, the first time I was just like, okay, it might just be, like, a fucking weirdo. Like, comics aren't normal people. So yeah. maybe he's like, you know, whatever. But after the third time, you have to go, what's happening here? Yeah. It yeah. makes the black shirt too. It's the black be, shirt. Dude, You're I both mean, tall. I mean. Mustache, hair. And, and also, I will say, it's so funny that those probably four comics were like, Dylan Cronin's a fucking asshole. I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went up and said congratulations to him, and he went like, thanks. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? How do you handle congratulations? Hey, congratulations on winning. Oh, well, you know what I've been telling everybody? What? Competitions don't mean anything. Yes, that's what he said to me. Because <laughs> yeah. I congratulated that, like whenever I just moved here a week or two ago, I saw him. Well, it feels so embarrassing to be like, thank you so much. Like, this actually really meant a yeah. lot to me. And, yeah. you know, it, it, you, know you don't want to be like, whatever yeah. about it. I did yeah. my best jokes. But actually, we met, we did not meet in comedy. No, we, we didn't. We did not meet in comedy. No. We he, met, yeah, I was his server. Yeah. Whenever I got into town, I went to some diner. But I do remember when you came in, it's so funny that, because I think I saw you later that night in the Sunset Green Room. Yeah, yeah, But I was like, you walked in, and I looked at all my coworkers, and I go, that is a man. <laughs> <laughs> I go, that's what a man looks like, okay? That's that's funny, because it, it's, funny to, it's funny to be like, that's an attractive person, and then everybody's like, you look like him. Yeah. And then it's like, I kind of just want to fuck myself, maybe? That's a, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Huge I in think the gay world. Huge in Is the it? gay world. Oh, okay. But people have accused me and Chip of looking alike. And like, they're, when they do that, that they're me. That upsets so me. Well, they're, they're me. They're like, you you want to fuck yourself? you And I'm like, what's oh. happening? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I also don't think I look like no. Chip at all. No, you guys don't look, you guys don't look anything alike. Thank you. Both, uh, you think that we look alike? I don't know who Chip is. So He's thanks. Okay. Well, okay. so he doesn't yeah, just... Yeah, show me. I would like to put him... If you do, I'm going to be fucking mean about it, though. And also, how Good. old are you? 29. Amazing. How old are you guys? 29. Really? Class of 2012? Yeah. Yeah. Love okay, it. let's go. How, you're younger, aren't you? I'm younger, yeah. 27. 20, okay. I was going to say six, but yeah.
That's insane that anybody would say that you guys look alike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This yeah. doesn't feel very supportive. It doesn't not not in a negative way either way. It just you guys just objectively don't. It's look usually the same. a non-white person, and I'll just go, "LOL, yeah, I guess we all look alike." That's a good response. Yeah, racism. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge in but, the podcast. But yeah. it's it, but I go, I just go, you're you've probably never been told this, but you're being incredibly racist right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Listen, other races can be racist. That's the thing we don't want to talk about, but we're going to today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four white guys in a room. Yeah. Let's talk about race. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, people get mad about that. We both said, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Wow. So you just moved here. Are you liking it? I love it. Yeah. It's great. You I mean, moved I've from Florida. Florida. I lived in like Did you Palm, live in San Palm Diego Beach. for a bit? No, I've been to San Diego recently. Okay. But no, I never lived in San Diego. My buddy Josh, who I moved here with, was in San Diego for a while. Actually, I guess both of my roommates were, they're both uh, military, so they were in San Diego for a uh, while. Hot. So, yeah. One of, yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, Colton, when I, I met Matt doing comedy in Florida, and we did a mm. show outside of a bar. Which is funny because it was right around the same time that you had your huge kratom phase. Oh no! And it's no, like no, a huge kratom yeah. phase. That's what we're calling it. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, it was bad. And we <laughs> did it at a kratom bar. Apparently, there's a lot of kratom comedy in Florida. Yeah, kratom comedy. So when I say it to people, they don't get like they don't get like so they have like kratom and kava, right? They yeah. go hand in hand. I've never done either of them. I did heroin like an adult. And, uh, oh my god! Did you? Yeah. Have for a long time? Uh, yeah, like four or five years. Did you play sports in high school? Yeah, I yeah. Guys who play sports in high school love heroin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's because it, it numbs the uh, disappointment of our dads. You guys should get that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, our dads actually are like kind of obsessed with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually weird. It is. Yeah. yeah our dad. My dad calls. Is like, hey, how are you doing? I'm kidding. He never calls me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but well, not because I don't of know the gay my thing. Dad. So. You don't know your biological dad? No. I'm unloading a lot on you really quick. No, we we were talking that. about Kava and now <laughs> yeah. you're just like, you were addicted oh, to heroin and don't know your dad? Did that story... Oh, yeah. Did you want to say anything about Kratom? Well, no, I just thought it was funny because when I went to Florida to do the show, Matt was like, yeah, we do these fucking Kratom shows all they the suck. time. And then They're he just so attacked bad. the oh. audience for like 20 I minutes. Why but, but they loved it. Kratom almost destroyed oh, yeah. this podcast. I said it once, I'll say it again. No, it's real. <laughs> the only fights me and Colton have ever been in is when he's high on Kratom. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I've, I've never done it, but I mean, I've done all the other opiates and that's yeah. basically what Kratom is. Yeah. But yeah, we used to do comedy. That, uh, like they had them there all the time because they already have like a built-in uh like uh, like you know patronage and it's really just a bunch of drug addicts who live in yeah. a halfway house in south florida yeah. and they know that kratom doesn't come up on a drug test oh. and then but they're not fun people to perform to that's no, for sure no. they're fucking asleep it's like yeah it's like know? it's like performing outside the methadone clinic yes, like, oh, exactly. fan fantastic here yeah. we are you guys are y'all in line for the methadone you want to hear all the couple of jokes yeah you no. guys are a great lively crowd <laughs> it's like an opium house is that what they're called it's it's, it, it feels like that. Yeah. It? Yeah. It's uh, it's weird. I guess like that's like really specific to South Florida. But yeah. Like the, it's basically a bar except all they will have there is kava and kratom like drinks or kratom or whatever. Yeah. yeah In Denver they have yeah. like <laughs> apple stores. You know like you know like weed dispensaries but it's all kratom. Yeah. And and they're very like, yeah, well, this is called this. And oh, of course, yeah, this one's called the Vietnam what, yeah. white, whatever. And then they go, but just let you know, it's only called that because it used to be grown there. It's illegal in Vietnam. I was like, it's illegal in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're casually doing it here. Like yeah. this is in my gas station. That's yeah. crazy. It is. Well, dude, when you can buy a drug in a gas station, you it's should bad. do it. Dude. Yeah. I Wait. used to. Did you guys ever smoke like K2 or oh, like, yeah. Spice? No, I do. You guys ever smoke salvia? Salvia. salvia I, did. I never did salvia. Yeah, never I never did. Salvia. Never did spice. Spice. I always heard was like it aggressively was, bad. Dude, it was a nightmare. Yeah. Dude. The first time I did it, I thought I was having a heart attack, and my mom came down to check on me, and ended up like consoling me for like an hour <laughs> while I like twitched. It was crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Well, and then I kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you, did you accept her love? Whenever anybody would be like, "Are you on drugs?" I'm like, "Well, you're a bitch, Carly." Well, okay. So that time I sister. was like 15, and I was just like panicking, and I was yeah. like, "Mom." But when I was like addicted to drugs, it was very much like, "Get off my." Fucking back, 
if you had my life, which was great. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I went through some things, but, you yeah. know, overall, it was fine. I had a friend who was, we know him, but uh, he was relapsing on heroin, but he didn't want us to know that he was relapsing. And But he'd be, like, falling out and, like, holding the bar. And I'm like, dude, dude are you okay? Like, you clearly on drugs. He goes, no, I was working at a fucking food truck all day, dude. You don't yeah. know how <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> dude, my classic move was to be out, and then one of my boys would be like, Matt. And I'd be like, I'm not asleep. Like, yeah. <laughs> every time. dad watching TV. Yes, yeah. exactly. Except you're a heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> Basically the same as my dad uh, falling asleep to the History well, Channel. Yeah, and well, you didn't know your dad. But um, Yeah, I have a stepdad. Me and my dad. God, I thought I was going to get a laugh as I said. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I I'm sorry to step on your punchline. Did you no, it's fine. It was bad. But did you have you ever seen like a picture of your biological dad? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's weird. Like, I know who the, I know who he is. Yeah. Uh, who? His, his first name's Lindell. Isn't that that's fucking bad? <laughs> that suck? Do you have a nickname? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I hope people don't call him Lindell. Seriously. Lenny? His poor fucking third baby mama having to moan his name. Or I guess my mom, too. But yeah, people moan names. Some people moan names. I, I like when people say my name. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Matt's <laughs> fine. If I hope they're not thanking me. That feels, <laughs> that feels transactional. Feel like one yeah. of us doesn't want to be there if you're saying thank you. Oh, oh <laughs> thanks, Matt. Do you, not, do you not like your name being said? No. Yeah. I go, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like you say somebody's name to get their attention. But it's like, if I, just I feel like. Yeah. I like yeah, I like the name. I like Matt. <laughs> I prefer I prefer faggot, but um, that's yeah, just, that's just me. Yeah, are you actually is that something you're actually into? Yeah, yeah, called the faggot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's well, real. I've seen your clips though. You're a top, right? Yeah, but he's an oral top. Okay. So, yeah, so I only have I only top anally, but that is like something that I only do if I, it's like a regular thing with somebody. Like I don't want to just do that with anybody, but you know. Gotcha. When we're, when we're talking about Shulkin, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah he'll, okay. He likes to suck. Yeah. He calls well, his house the suck, suck shack. shack. <laughs> the suck shack. Yeah, my apartment is the suck shack. <laughs> Get yourself like a wooden like chiseled sign. Absolutely. Hang it over the door. Yeah, it's very easy. I love that. I do love that. Just oh, doors open. <laughs> I don't need doors open. That's crazy. Uh, you're just yeah. sitting there. I open the door because it's like, you're like, you got to be able to close it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't just say the door's unlocked because then they walk in and you're like, uh-oh, you got to get this person out of here. If mm -hmm. you open it, you're like, no, thank you. Do you have and a And you've people? done that? What? Do you have like a people? I have like, yeah. So I, wouldn't you want to wait for them to knock, look in if they're, you know, you don't know what they always look like, do you? Jimmy, how dare you expose <laughs> me on this podcast? <laughs> how fucking yeah. dare Yeah. I thought that Tinder, I mean, uh, grinder is just like butthole picks. I, Okay, no, well, that's like one, if you send me a butthole pic, you're blocked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also do require a face pic before okay, you come over, okay. although I have gone with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. such a surprise. Oh. Yeah. And then, well, sometimes you open it up and you be like, I'm not feeling that. That's what you'll say that? Yeah. And, and, and they'll they, just they go, go, all right. That's, that's the name of the game. Wow. Hey, okay. That's, that's cool. so wild. They go, well, I am. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Then no one looked at you and said, I'm not feeling it before. Yeah. I don't know what that feels like. One time, uh, Chip and I were going to go hook up with somebody, and uh, I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to stay in. And Chip came home like 10 minutes later. He yeah. goes, he, did, he said he wasn't interested. He starts just crying. I was Aww. like, oh, he probably just wanted to fuck me. That's so good. Oh. Consoling, <laughs> consoling your husband after your hookup doesn't want to fuck him is a hilarious like, <laughs> alternate reality for most people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know how to deal with it. Like, how long have you guys been together? Uh, about six years. And do you and you guys are just like open across the board? It's it. We go through waves, but because okay. for a while he was getting real sad every time I'd fuck somebody else. Right, right. I was in an open relationship for like a year and a half recently. Mm -hmm. Whoa, and it's whoa with it, a girl. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, were you just hoping he was like no? Well, no, yeah. like girls huge usually are like hog. really not into that. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like when she broke up with me, her feelings about it were a lot different than when we decided to do it kind of thing. Like, yeah, but it's all shit that she didn't tell me. And then she told me and then I was like, you should have told me you felt this way. And she was like, I was hoping that you would change your mind. It's like girls, girls will literally stay in a relationship for seven years, hoping he'll change his mind and crazy. not bring it up. It's crazy. No, but it, like I do like to like def I know I've never gotten to talk about it on the podcast, but like I because a lot of people when you tell them is like, oh, I'm sure she loves 
loves that. And it was like the conversation we had initially is like she was she's bisexual, like has like dated women in her past. And she's like my last relationship. I felt really stifled by like my inability to like like you know like explore that or not explore yeah, but like box. give in to that side yeah. of myself yeah eat pussy and yeah. i was like i get it yeah i like it too you yeah. know i also feel stifled when i can't eat other pussy yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was very like uh it seemed like a good conversation and then a year and a half later when we were eating fucking pasta that she made and she was like i don't think i want to be with you anymore it was a lot different of a conversation yeah wait did you guys have like rules in your open relationship? yeah 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 What's so like rules um, don't ask, don't tell. Don't. <laughs> no, it really was kind of like don't ask, don't tell to a degree, right? Like I don't want to see a picture of the person that you're going to hook up yeah. with. Uh-huh. Vice versa. Um, was she also allowed to hook up with the guys? Yeah. You're so cool. Yeah. I mean, I try. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's what I try. No, I try. I try. No, I'm <laughs> telling you, there are so many guys who I do meet who are in open relationships, and they'll be like, well, she's allowed to fuck girls, but she can't fuck guys. And I'm like, that is so yeah. weird. That's not really, like, open. That's, That's no. like, kind of fuck. Well, like, and, like, because, like, she had an ex before me. The guy she dated before me was like, yeah, like, if that's a part of you, you can hook up with girls. But then he was, like, reading her, like, messages to girls on dating apps and, like, trying to, like, finagle his way into a fucking threesome. threesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, no threesomes was a part of ours. Like, obviously, like, safe sex, don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. Like, shower before you, you know. For a while, we lived together, so it was, like, a weird scheduling thing where it's, like, I got to do it while she's not home so that I can be, like – cleaned up nobody at our house or yeah, her yeah. house that i lived in like shit like that <laughs> yeah. that was no, mostly yeah. her rule <laughs> <laughs> the girl comes over she's like a woman lives here yeah percent. <laughs> yeah well that is funny that was like a funny rule i had that same thought i was like if i ever bring anybody here they're gonna go oh a woman decorated this house yeah. would you That's- tell the other girls that you were in a relationship most of the time yeah there were some times where it was like i would like match with somebody on a dating app and it's like so straightforward that we just want to fuck that I'm like, what's the point of having like a long drawn out, like question and answer, yeah. you know, thing yeah. with this person. Like, but most of the time, if there was any sort of like conversation back and forth about things, usually I would. I don't, I think I'm comfortable being open, but doing it with another couple, I'm kind of like, I don't really want to be in the mess of your guys' relationship. Well, dude, so yeah, that's the that thing. Because, so like, there's one thing about being open, and then there's another thing being fucking poly. These Polys are for losers. <laughs> dude, loser. these psychos. I was talking to another comic recently. <laughs> no, polyamorous is... What do you identify as? Um, <laughs> the owner of the suck shack. <laughs> <laughs> owner operator. <laughs> 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 owner and operator. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're having a good time. You yeah. know, what do I identify as? I just fucking well, one. I think you start with one and then go from there. But you guys, you have such hard opinions on fucking poly people and all that. I think it's crazy to be like I'm in love with multiple people. Why, Colton? <laughs> crazy. Why is that crazy? Because like people who have who are in poly polyamorous relationships don't have anything else going on in their life. You don't see anyone who's really successful. Hundred percent. And this is that is it. Yes. You don't have a job. You don't like you have to get a job, get a creative pursuit. You don't need yeah. another person. Okay. Okay. I, I get that. There's there is a lack of time. Yeah. That you can't just like be fucking everybody. You should be allowed in a relationship to have sex with other people. Yeah. I'm not taking anyone else to the movies. Okay, that's crazy. Yes, I'm yes, not doing that. Exactly. I, well, but and you go to your the the movies with your friends. So why why is it does it matter if sometimes you go to the movie and sometimes you fuck them? It's too much emotional. Well, I, I, yeah, I think like uh, my experience is is every person I've met who's like. I'm in like a pot or, or like some people will be like, I'm single poly or whatever. Single poly is desperate. <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> which is I'm crazy. Poly. Single poly is the most desperate thing you can be. Like, I'm single, but I'm definitely poly. So I need multiple people. It's yeah. like, bitch, you can't even get one. Okay. Yeah, I'm single, but I have a lot of slots open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy. And every person I've met who's like in like a, like, it, like really deep in the whole poly lifestyle is like, mentally ill like, like a scientology it's almost a every single time there i like eventually down the road i'm having a conversation or an experience with them and i'm like you're out of your fucking mind wait yeah. time out are you having these conversations with women that are poly or men that are poly because i mm. don't believe men be- like subscribe to it i think men say they're poly but they're just looking to fuck 
I'm I'm talking about women. Uh, Thank you. But uh, yeah, I also probably believe <laughs> we're that all like, too. are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do. I do have people think I'm gay or bi a lot. Somebody That's told me they thought I was bi because of the way I roll my jeans. I was gonna say you're. I thought you were bi because you have thigh tattoos. Yeah, that's fair. And I, I thought you were yeah. bi because sometimes you talk like this. Yeah. And we all think you're bi because we all, all think you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a want. Yeah, it's more, yeah, it's yeah. more of a want. We're like, please be It's bi. like a manifestation. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I do. I mean, I'm aware I have very effeminate, like, it's like not the effeminate. way that I am sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. God, I wish this app was working because I, I, oh, yeah. I got an app. I want to know. We were going to test everyone's voice for see how masculine they are today. I don't know. Yeah. I think Jimmy would have the most masculine voice. Or maybe, wait, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. I think so. Not I feel like my, you're, you, you mine and your voice are the same level of deepness, no? No, I think you got a little bit more baritone in yours. No, I think that maybe you have the most <laughs> oh, masculine oh, voice. <laughs> you know, because he bug. talks, and you know that man doesn't give a fuck what he sounds like. That's true. When Dylan does his straight voice, it sounds very masculine. Yeah, do it. You have like a straight. Uh, I want to hear it. Well, yeah. I'm like, um, <clears throat> what's up? What's that's up? the only. That's the only thing he says in his straight voice. <laughs> that's the only thing you need to say if you're a straight guy. Yeah, what's yeah, up? Yeah. Now I'm nervous. Um, how you doing, brother? <laughs> <laughs> doing good. <laughs> that's how I talk at the grocery. store. You know, store. you kind of sound yeah. like. <laughs> well, I if, there's, if, I, if I, if I, if you ever, hear, I have like 15 different voices. But like, if I'm talking in a deeper voice to a man and you overhear it, I just don't know that guy and I'm scared of him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly, yeah. God, I'm always just like, yeah, how's the day going? Anytime yeah, I have good. to do anything with my car, oh, I yeah. always go in there. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's making all sorts of noises. You might as well check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's That's like, nice. I'm just here for the oil change. But if you find anything else, I could be talked into anything. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> you guys both do a bit southern yeah you notice yeah. that get a little like dylan on it. you sound like peyton manning when you do it thank you <laughs> and you just sound like you're doing texas yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm just i'm fucking foghorn leghorn over <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah i won't do my gay voice no please when do you do it no when do you do it i don't have one. Oh, well that's suspicious <laughs> <laughs> no dude i've never been i've never even my voice has never even been gay dude i, never, <laughs> never do gay stuff I, I don't even sing lady gaga on my gay voice in my car yeah, yeah, yeah. wait were you guys doing gay stuff in high school in the football team you know what no that's so cool did you what do you mean by gay stuff Almost every one of my straight friends is like jerked off a friend. It's crazy. No, um, no, like when they were like young. Maybe they're not straight. <laughs> Dylan, no. I just made the craziest eye contact. Uh, that was so I, I'm glad I looked over and caught that. No, um, you're like, okay. It's not, I, I do like to be a proponent of, I don't think that we should chastise men who experiment sexually with other men as gay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm saying that because I want them to come over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want them to give you yeah, that But also, I do think it's fucked up that some, like, I think there are more guys would be openly bisexual if they didn't get so, because you come out, you're going to get from other guys and from women and women when women are the most accepting of you know gay until their boyfriend's a little bit yeah, bisexual no, yeah. and then you're a faggot oh, yeah. and, it, and it's really yeah. kind of fucked up and i you know and that's why i suck their boyfriend's dicks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get back at to them. get back I, at them i know i know girls who i've heard be like i would never hook up with a guy who's bisexual i'm like that's crazy you're bisexual <laughs> oh like, bi yeah bisexual white women are the most homophobic people you'll they're ever the meet worst in too life. the amount of the amount of white women i know who identify as bisexual have maybe it's in their act possibly it's definitely in their instagram bio and they go i made out with a girl one time i'm like that feels like it shouldn't count yeah. that's why well, that's what i'm screaming about on stage <laughs> is that, is yeah, really? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I attack the bisexual women on the ground see i, I don't have the because you know what else that's happening now is that i'll say do we have any gay people here i say it every single night uh-huh it's women whoa yeah they're sitting next to a man i go is this your boyfriend i go you're not gay I, it's yeah. fine. You're bi. If whatever you want to be is fine. You yeah. know, I'm, turn, I'm turning into Candace Owens. Congratulations <laughs> on me. Yeah. That's a statement. You know, yeah, racism like, doesn't exist. When did exist. bisexual become gay? I don't understand that. Yeah. Um, I think that more straight men will be okay expressing themselves sexually if gay men become more misogynistic. 
It's happening. I know it is, and I love it. I, I think it's incredible. Say, if gay say. men start just attacking white bitches, uh-huh. oh, it's a new generation. Texas You're gays right? so far are quickly becoming my favorite gays. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? You guys specifically. Oh, thank you. I love, whole... I love a gay guy who will say faggot. That's yeah. really just kind of my... Oh, I scream at it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, You're like, stop I get... doing my act. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I get exactly why you like that. I liked it when he said that. Yeah, no, that, it's <laughs> just... so fun. I went, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell, That's, this guy's fucking uh, coming on to me over I, here. I, We're I trying to do a podcast. It's, or his favorite gays in the scene. Something's <laughs> happening. Okay. No. Um. That, yeah. Well, yeah. The, people, I think just everyone in Austin, the comics are just kind of like, say whatever you want. Make it that funny. That is kind of, you know, it's funny. I So I was, I came here for like a week, a couple months ago. And then I was in LA shortly after. And I was sit, I was at, um, where was I? Uh, I was at the comedy store and there was somebody in who had just been here and he was like, all those fucking Austin comics, they're just obsessed with talking about pronouns and saying gay and blah, blah, blah. And I was just sitting there listening. And then he went on stage and fucking bombed. And I'm like, yeah. maybe you should have called the crowd faggots. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. They were pretty good. <laughs> People are hungry for that. I, I will say that in Austin, a lot of comics are, they, they are obsessed with the pronoun stuff. And yeah. it's to the point where I'm like, do you have like, I personally, and this is my own joke writing stuff, like I don't have a joke about the Holocaust and I don't have a joke about 9-11 because I wasn't in the Holocaust and I wasn't in the towers. Right, the minute yeah. I am, I will have jokes about it. And that's just how I write jokes. And so I think it's weird when people are obsessed with like the trans stuff and the non-binary stuff when they have like zero experience and yeah. their only experience is hearing other comics' opinions on it. Yes. I'm like, why write jokes about it? You have, n- that's why it all feels heartless. Like there's the jokes aren't that good. Well, I did a, I did the fucking crew show at the, at the mothership and I'm like you know I'm in the back so fucking nervous I just want to do good I want him to I want Adam to invite me back all this shit and I have a joke it's basically a story about a person I went on a date with who ha- part way through the date is like I identify as a man and then like the whole premise is like people some people just have too many things for my brain they become they're a man and then they go I'm autistic and then they start talking about how they like to par- practice witchcraft it's like a whole story right yeah about a trans person and I watch like I'm not joking like six comics go up and talk about non-binary trans whatever and I'm in the back like should I do a different joke I mean all those jokes stunk for the most part yeah Mm -hmm. but it was weird like dude it was so many it was so many comics in a row and I was like what the fuck is going on it was weird the those the people that have those jokes will go sorry you're offended it's like no i'm not it's not offensive it's inaccurate yeah <laughs> it's like when guys are like i can always tell when a guy is joking about like being on grinder on on there when they're like i was on grinder that was there swiping i was like honey it's a grid you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. no one's swiping on grinder you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're yeah. not matching i match yeah. with this guy on grinder you don't match yeah. you're lying yeah. you know what i mean Get but matched. i also feel like that's a open mic thing right like good comics in austin aren't doing those jokes they are they are really uh, they are they are i mean i haven't seen it i mean i also don't pay attention yeah. as much during the show i'll say like though this. a lot of the, the i mean the mothership is also you're going to get a ton of that trans stuff there it's just like people i think yeah. comics even get it in their mind like oh i should talk about this because th- who's here will it's like, like the it. rogan yeah. bro yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah kind of crowd where you're like they'll love it like i mean i i mean i did that joke that night and there's a part where i'm i'm i in the joke where I um, am talking about, you know, the date shows up has big tits. And then I'm like, as a white guy, big liking big tits is in my blood. Like yeah. my dad <laughs> has a Budweiser poster in his garage right now. And then I just like, I go, he took the Bud Light one down. And usually it's just like a throwaway nothing. It got like a roar. And there yeah. was a guy who like, I'm not kidding, stood up out of his chair and like started clapping. And I was like, fucking relax. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is a comedy show, not a rally. Yeah, yeah. Like it was weird. I was like, that's, that feels, that feels scary. I will <laughs> say when I'm there, when I say I'm gay, I have to have like joke, 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 joke right afterwards to get them to be like, uh-huh. Oh, he's fun. You know what I mean? Cause that you, just oh, saying you're gay the good there. Ones. Can, mm-hmm. That's literally what you kind of have to do yeah. because otherwise you're digging yourself a hole of being like you see these guys like eyes like melt over they're like not a gay yeah one. yeah you know, it's crazy and i i just go you're i'm gay and you you're are gay. too yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy i think it i love uh think because my dad loves boobs he loves yeah. them so much and i think <laughs> 
there's have you heard that it's because you like your brain is your body is wired to be like that's going to be a great mother of a child one day right yeah i've i've heard that like all the biological kind of stuff where it's like all for procreation mm -hmm. yeah but yeah so what do you think why why does my husband like ass so much <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. I mean, honestly speaking, like, I'm an ass is, guy. I'm not this, even. All men turned into an ass guy in 2016. <laughs> uh, like, every yeah. straight man all of a sudden in 2016 was like, I've always been in the ass. It's like you guys were shamed about it for so long. And everyone was like all obsessed with tits until 2016. Yeah. Well, anorexia oh. was huge oh, in the so early, early 2000s that no one had an ass. That's, so that's true. a great point. Like Paris Hilton in her heyday. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is like a that's exactly who I was thinking Ritchie, of. All yeah. that, well, that was so I mean, there's no, but there's no ass to talk about or gawk. At, that's you know? true. And then not that they had a lot of tits either. And then JLo comes along, but she was Hispanic, so the white guys were kind of like, "All right, that's fine," you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of these Mexican fellows? They love ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, then yeah, Kim exactly. Kardashian came in. And they were like, "Armenians white." Yeah. 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 <laughs> so they're like, we're yeah, good to All go. it took was for somebody to technically qualify as a white woman with a nice ass yeah. for men to be like, "It's okay." Yeah. It's yeah. All yeah, right. yeah. Here we go. I feel safe. Jessica Simpson. She had an ass, right? Oh. Yeah, the Daisy Dukes a little bit. I think for the time she had an ass. I think if we were to look at it now, we'd go, "That's crazy." Yeah, but it's all it's all relative, you know. Yeah. It's all relative to the ass that's ar surrounding it. What are you looking for? Your phone? I, yeah, I'm gonna look up Jessica Simpson's ass. Well, oh. there was that whole thing when she did the whole Daisy Dukes deal, yeah. and they re-released uh, what's the movie that Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Funny movie to recreate, by the way, because it's just a car driving around with like the Confederate flag on the hood. Like, really <laughs> hilarious. They could never do that now, I don't think. Well, no, like but Johnny it's... Knoxville and Stifler, you know, yeah, it was on yeah. brand. Yeah. Oh my god, I thought Stifler was so hot in those movies. You when guys. I was a kid. This is close to no ass. Yeah, is it? They just, you, you know, know, you know what though? In the early two thousands, how they would trick you is that is insanely no see. ass. What this they would is, do is this they is no, she doesn't. If they show you enough thigh, you just assume that it translates to the ass, but it doesn't always. So you go Daisy Dukes, you go ass. I do just want to yeah. say as we're talking about Jessica Simpson's ass that we should also say that although she's not acting or singing anymore, she did make herself a billionaire from her shoe company. Good for her. Go off, Queen. And I think that's amazing. Wait, I mean, does Nick Lachey have, get any of that money? I don't. I, when I was a kid, I fucking was obsessed with Nick Lachey. I thought he was the hottest guy in the entire world. Me and my mom would just like drive around, listen to his music. She'd be like, "Isn't he so handsome?" <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. He I do that a lot. Didn't she? Objectively, <laughs> mom. objectively, mom, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to be like him. I want to yeah. be like Nick Lachey and have some a girl like Jessica Simpson. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, how in high school it was so embarrassing yeah. when like you don't know when you're gay and you're trying to hide it and everyone else knows and they're like. Like, what's your celebrity crush? I literally was in the locker room being like, I just don't see it with Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, was like, I was like, guys, her acting sucks. <laughs> like, all the guys were like, who do you like? I was like, Paris Hilton. They're like, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, it's okay. over. With Megan, I'd be like, have you seen her thumbs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I They're just couldn't do bro. it. What's wrong with her thumbs? She got fucked up hitchhiker's thumbs. Like the long no thumbs? no no they're oh, like the nubs. like why the I know I have a friend who has those it's weird like the where the, like the nail is like shorter and they're like wide weirdly yeah, I, I gotta so. now I have to look it up it's yeah. gonna bother me yeah yeah would, that, would a woman's hands affect you having sex with her no no would it affect you dating her I don't think so are you into feet I'm not I don't have a foot fetish but I've had toes in my mouth before yeah and Which it ones? did something for me you're an adult. Huh? Which You're an ones? adult. Yeah, I'm an adult. Which ones? Big toes. Big toes. I mean, all of them, really. Uh huh. Did you try to put the whole thing in your mouth? We I mean, cut, listen. Those lied, I'm a huge down his throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a. It is doing something for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a I'm a big dude, and women have dainty little feet. I could probably pop all five piggies in at one time if I had to. If you had to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, you know, it's. Oh yeah, I see so, the thumbs. So oh, do you God, think you're bad. gonna bring your uh, open relationship into your next relationship? You know, I don't know. I th I liked it, but I didn't like. I still I still love the idea of meeting somebody who I love so much that I'm just like, you're it. I yeah. also just wish my fucking the my the part of my brain that connects to my penis. I really want it to calm down sometimes. Same. <laughs> you know, where I'm like, I uh, I. Uh, Dan Soder has a joke where he's like, cause he's like getting to like where he's like 40 and he mm -hmm. said something like that. He's like, it's finally calmed down. It's quiet. He was like, and <laughs> yeah. I was just like, damn dude. I was like watching him do his act. And I was just like, 
I feel you, man. I want that so bad. Yeah. He's like, I spent all of my twenties and thirties being dragged around by my penis. And it's just like, dang. Yeah. I, uh, that way though. I, okay. Yes. In fact, so like, I won't realize that my brain is like trying to have, like I was on a phone call with him and I, uh, I had just nared my balls. Yeah. <laughs> but I, we were getting There's like, it was like the conversation thing. was getting heated and I didn't realize that it was because my balls were burning. Mm. And I was like, Hey, it's not your fault. I'll call you back. <laughs> like, oh my God. That, but I, I get the same way with just like being horny. And I'm like, why am I acting? And I go, Oh, you forgot to jerk off today. Yeah. That's why I'm like very much. I like the apps are like, not, I, it's like so hard to use them in a healthy way. Cause you're like so horny. It's, mm -hmm. and then you're like, and there's a possibility of actually getting someone over here. You're like, Ooh. Yeah. Grinder seems like the wild west as far as like, yeah. cause like, like Tinder, Bumble, all that is like, is what it is. But like a lot of like most women at the very least have some weird arbitrary rule that will keep them from coming to your house, even if they want to like that night and also safety reasons, which is reasonable. Right. I, do a whole, uh, I do a whole joke about it. I'm like, women would get on grinder if men promised to stop killing them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you exactly. promise they'd come over. Yes, you know what I mean? exactly, exactly. What are some arbitrary rules that you heard? Well, you know, like there's just like, I mean, the cl a classic one is like, don't fuck him till the third date. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As if it makes any real difference. But have you ever dated someone that you had sex with on the first date? So, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, but like my last uh, girlfriend, uh, who I love very much, did not have sex with me the first time we hung out. I don't even know if it happened the second time. So now that so I'm maybe thinking about no, it, it, the third time, maybe that rule's not so arbitrary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, think I think a lot of the the rules are not for protection, but they know that men need these like hoops to jump through, and if they're not willing to jump through those hoops, and they go like, okay, yeah, but I mean, also like the girlfriend I had before that. I mean, I've really only had like four like serious girlfriends. I don't really like people very much. Like, uh, and she slept with me. I dated her like six months long distance um, and she slept with me the first night that we hung out while she had a boyfriend. Uh huh. There's a lot of red flags to look at, you yeah. know, which I looked at at the end after we broke up. But, you know, so I, but I still was like, you know, did you identify any of your own red flags? I mean, I cheated on her. So that was, yeah, pretty, that yeah. was a big cheater. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've, 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 <laughs> I've got a, pr a pretty extensive history of being unfaithful. I in, my, in high, I had like a high school sweetheart, you know, fucked around on her. Then I dated a girl while I was addicted to heroin. I never cheated on her, but it wasn't. How could me. you? You were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't because I didn't want to. It's because nobody wants to fuck the heroin addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's even sadder for her. It's like yeah. yeah, he didn't cheat on me. It's like oh, there's a needle in his arm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I also had like a like a uh, like a high school boy like Justin Bieber haircut, and I was addicted to heroin, and it was just like there wasn't a lot going on for me. I did yeah. work at the UPS store. Oh, did you wear the outfit? <laughs> no, we was like uh, a, we don't care. a polo, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just mostly the shorts. shorts yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But if yeah. doing heroin, do you have any secrets about jazz that you like to share? <laughs> Secrets about jazz. Yeah, like, does it make more no, sense to dude, you? But I mean, I, 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 doing heroin doesn't make you understand jazz, but it just makes you kind of envious of those cool black guys who got to do heroin and be awesome at the bass, like you know, or the fucking saxophone. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even A trumpet. Yeah, trumpet. I would. I. I couldn't even like play Madden. How long were you doing heroin? <laughs> Oh my god, that's, that's the straightest uh, yeah. fucking dude. It can't even play fucking mad. <laughs> you just fall asleep. You're like, fuck, I gotta delay a game. Um, delay a game. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was. I mean, I started doing pills when I was like 18, and then uh, probably was doing heroin by the time I was 19 ish. 19. Did you going start with 20. snorting it? Yeah. So I started with. Percocet. I was selling weed. My friend found a bottle of Percocet and gave them to me. Yeah. As like they were like, would you buy these from me? It's like a like I I took her out to like a Mexican lunch and I got a bottle of ninety Percocet for like a twelve dollar enchilada plate. It's the best yeah. deal I've ever gotten on drugs in my life. Yeah. And I took some of those and I was like, these are awesome. And then I have a friend who is doing. I guess people call them perks now, but like the Roxy's, like the blue fucking. 
uh, I don't know. I'm so used to being around drug addicts. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, just alcoholics. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is okay. Um, and then he was snorting those, and I was like, that seems kind of intense. And then I ran out of the Percocet that I had, and he was like, these are the same thing. They're just better. And then you do those, and then that guy sells you those, and then that guy eventually moves on to heroin, and then you find out that that's cheaper and stronger. Mm-hmm. And you go, that's a no brainer. So I was the heroin in in Oklahoma is and here, I guess now is like black tar. Oh. So you can't really snort it. You can put it on foil and smoke it, though, which is sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. And how long were you doing that for? A little a little while. And then once you move to the needle, it's like, well, there's not much better than this. So, whoa. Yeah. And uh, you don't need it to be. No, I mean, it's it's. Yeah. I what mean, was your rock bottom? Why did you, you stop? Bored? What? Did you get so bored? Oh, there's no lack of adventures or like, uh, like uh, quests to accomplish when you <laughs> are addicted to heroin. <laughs> there's no, and then sometimes some days you don't have heroin, so you take like 300 milligrams of Adderall, and then there's so much to do. There's not enough to do. Yeah. you know what I mean. Um, I, I don't. I mean, like I, uh, I, I mean, the the real the like the real answer is like just being like 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 wanting to die yeah and then like heroin stops working so like the whole idea is like i was doing it and it would make me feel better and it would like the depression anxiety the spiritual fucking just crisis that i was in constantly is like calm down but then eventually like the drugs stop working and you are addicted to them but it doesn't make you feel any better but i also like I had a friend die and then I had from drugs and then I had like a good friend's dad who I was like super close with die Mm -hmm. from drugs. I missed his funeral because I was getting high and then ended up getting Baker acted and sent to the psych ward and then Baker acted. Yeah. So the Baker act is where they basically they acted. It's the Baker act in like Uh, California. They call it like 5150. Basically you're forced to a psych ward because you usually it's because you threatened to kill yourself, which Uh I did. So (laughs) drama. (laughs) It was kind of crazy. My my mom's ex uh, husband and and current boyfriend (laughs) drama His his he would always start to kill himself. Like he said, he sent his mom's suicide letter to my mom to be like, I'm not fucking kill myself. One night his son was uh, like suicidal was like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. And my mom was like, we got to drive over there and help him. And, and the dad was like, no, he just wants attention. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I have his playbook. All right. Listen, I, I taught him this. I've story. been spying on the sidelines for a while. It's okay. <laughs> All right. How, yeah. was, how was the psych ward? Um, pretty weird. Yeah. Pretty weird. You know, I had a nice break though. Yeah. I mean, did you have to wear a gown? Do you watch TV? No, there was no TV. There was a lot of books. Um, they didn't make me dress up in anything. Um, I, yeah, you, they have like chair, they don't have like full beds. They have like reclining chairs that you can sleep in. I don't really sleep much. And there is like a lot of like, I mean, it would be like, it feels like, uh, like gathering if you went and plucked a couple homeless people from like yeah. you know like outside and put them in like a room like this, like this and one. then you're just kind of like in there with them and i i mean like, i'm just like a like a white kid like i said like i have the like fucking like high school bieber haircut and yeah. i'm just like i'm not supposed to be in here <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge mistake yeah no you don't fucking get it my mom was being a fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, I'm sure, okay, whatever. And then, yeah. So. This was in Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. When did yeah. you get to Florida? I went to rehab in Texas. Uh, in Which one? South Padre Island. How oh. old are you? Uh, I'm 29 now. No, I but know. at the time I was, I was 22, about to turn 23. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then they sent me to a halfway house in Florida. And I lived there. And then I got my own place. I was like, why go back to Oklahoma? Yeah. yeah. You know? So, yeah. Where in yeah. Florida were you? West Palm Beach. Okay. Yeah. And the dreaded question, is that when you started doing comedy? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I literally got to a point where I was like two years sober and I was like, I got to, you know, like, like at first, like getting sober and like making friends and like feeling good and everything is like so awesome. And it's like, it still is. It's great. But eventually you go, okay, like I should probably do something with my life. 
And I thought about going back to school f- to do like physical therapy or something. And yeah. then I was like, you would like work like, with a football team and yeah. Yeah. I would be PT. like, yeah, exactly. I could just, I could be like taping up ankles. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, or I could try stand up comedy. Yeah. Which luckily has worked out. But at the time was a pretty bold decision. Yeah. But, I think anyone yeah. to really give it all to stand up comedy is always going to be a bold decision. It's yeah. Like, you, cause you are like, I, I, sometimes I think about it where I'm like, my friend's visiting me this week and I have to be like, Oh, she has no idea what she's getting herself into. Like it's right. a complete alternative lifestyle. Yeah. It's weird. Like, yeah. I mean, even like when we were, when I was here a couple months ago, um, like I brought like my girlfriend at the time and like I was doing spots like every night and then like, and she was like, this kind of sucks. And I was like, this is because she's used to me in Florida where it's like I might have a weekend where I'm at the club and every night, like, you know, for like three days, it's that. But then like during the week, it's like there's like one mic here. Maybe I'm on a book yeah. show here. Whereas like here it was like I have like two, three things every single night. I'm yeah. gone all night. And she was like, this stinks. Whenever I see a girl hanging out with her boyfriend who's a comic and she's always at the shows, I'm like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Like, your life is going to, you're either going to love this or this is going to ruin your relationship. Yeah. I, yeah. I stopped being like. Like, oh, you're you're here. Yeah. Why? Yeah. My girl comes to one show a week. She goes, I want to go to one show as like support, but that's it. And that's I'm like, good. great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Stay home. She goes, I like staying home, doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Mm-hmm. Have an independent girl who yeah. can stay at home and do her own things, not not be up in your fucking ass when you're trying to other people. Listen, okay. Uh, if you have a girlfriend and you're a comedian, you might be gay. You <laughs> <laughs> if she's at every show, she's probably just as mentally ill as you are. Oh, like, for honestly, sure. Honestly. Yeah. You know? Or like wants to do it, but then oh, just doesn't no. want to. I mean, to. like, there's a couple like big name comics who like whose significant others are comics or have started comedy because We can say them. their names right now. And it's like I mean, nothing would make me more fucking furious than my girlfriend being like, I think I want to do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you think you can fucking do you this? Can't. You do you can't. You can't. What's worse? Who do you if think? she just does it badly or if she starts it and she gets way better than you? I, I, that's, I, a, that's a real, that's a real, like, how healthy am I question? Yeah. Because the reality is I don't want an unfunny uh, comic girlfriend. Uh, but also, do I want her to be better than me? Fuck no. Probably not. I would much rather an unfunny one than but one that was better than me. Realistically. T- no. Well, no, I lo- you don't. Yeah. I realistically, that I'd rather unfunny, have one that's funnier. That unfunny one is going to be like, can you get me booked on that show? And I'm like, oh, babe. Uh, dude, my worst nightmare. You I love, suck. Uh, I love a guy who is funny off stage. Who is like yeah. absolutely dog shit on stage. I'm like, mm, that's the love of my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. I do. Anyone who's like really bad at comedy, I'm like, oh, now he's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love it. That's crazy. I do. Well, yeah, also, I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm like, who, 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 who he's going to be funnier than me? I doubt it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's never going to happen. I like that. Yeah, I like the confidence. Of yeah, that. yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you Jewish? No. Um, what are do you? I strike you as Jewish? No, I just you could be if you wanted. Yeah. What in Oklahoma mixed you up? I am a quarter Native American. Okay. So cool. And then which I tribe? A Chickasaw. Uh, and then is that enough for money? Nah, not really. Look at him. He doesn't deserve the money. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, maybe some like grants to college, which I didn't really do very well. So uh, in college. Yeah, I mean, I went for like a year, and then it's really hard to do college while you're on yeah, heroin. heroin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really tough. It's to... like, how do you get to class? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty tough. It's hard. I mean, yeah. So, but no, not like like dude. When I lived in Florida, they had the Seminole tribe out there. Those motherfuckers are making money, dude. Oh, it's really? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the white part of me is just some mix of European. I haven't really looked into it. Well, I don't care. Exactly. When people are like, you want to do 23 and me? I'm like, F- who? and say, see what? Yeah. You know what I mean? We got what we got. Yeah. yeah. It is going to change someone's mind about whether or not they want to have sex with me if I'm like, I'm actually 32% Irish. It's like, okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. don't <worry. laughs> I'm East Coast, small town, Irish Italian. That's all you need to know. Nothing Irish else. Italian. You're, yeah. But you're a very private p- person. I'm not private. You got, you got a lot of walls up. Well, that's and, then you, and you always go, that, you don't need to know that. Like what? I don't know, but I've been, we've been having conversations 
where you're like you'll just stop it right there and go you don't need to know that and i'll be like oh, so interesting I'm i think, the it's, the, I think it's the meanest I'll, thing in oh, the entire world can i clarify something i think it's hilarious when someone who really is close to you asks you a question and you go that's private i think that's the <laughs> funniest it's, it's the same bit. thing that when someone comes up to you and touches you you go Pl- take your hands off me it's my favorite thing to do but it is a joke like i'll tell you anything okay yeah. I'll, ask I'll, me right now i i will think of it okay yeah because i'm very What's Ski Mask's real name? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't He's so, he was so private about Ski Mask. And, and the ski guy. Mask. I, he, I have like a, a five minute joke about a guy whose apartment I went over to. And when I got there, he was wearing a ski mask. That's so funny. It's my one of my favorite stories to tell. On stage. It's so funny. It's funny that I th- thought I actually had feelings for him. <laughs> 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 it's so funny to be so sure. Uh, that you want your dick sucked. I imagine that's what was happening by a man. No, I actually went over there to suck his dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So to be that guy, to be so sure, but to also be so scared that you might get recognized in public that you wear or possibly purchase a scheme. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds he lives they, in Texas? He just had a ski mask. Yeah. yeah. Go to, I would have got to go to Ace Hardware or wherever. The, I don't even know where I they know. would sell a ski mask. Fucking like North what? Face. Yeah. No, Maybe you had to order one ahead of time yeah. just in case. Amazon. Did he Come get yeah. he was pretty hot in it, right? I'll he, tell you this, when he took it off, he was fucking gorgeous. It was So wet? wait, why did he finally take it off? Like what convinced him? Well, to... there when sometimes you go to hook up with someone that you never hooked up with and you're like, All right, let's just get this over or whatever, it's fun. And uh-huh. then you know sometimes you start hooking up with someone and you're like, Oh shit, there's like a ton of chemistry yeah. here. And it turned into like very quickly like, Let's go to the bedroom, ski mask is coming off, we're having full on sex. Yeah. And I ended up being there for like four or five hours. Damn. Like insane shit. And then God, um, the gig is fuck. And it's then I crazy. yeah, we had sex four like, or five hours a, a bunch more times. Oh yeah, yeah. Not I me. used to do poppers in high school. <laughs> That's so cool, and I've been telling straight people. Like, <laughs> no, straight people need to start doing poppers during sex. It will make you actually. Every time I'm on poppers having sex, I'm like, whoa. You do poppers? So yeah, it's make it's so much fun. Every time I'm on them, I'm fucking someone. I'm like, am I in love with this person? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know like the place that we bought our like K two and shit from. It's like some sketchy fucking smoke shop. Had poppers. We didn't know what they were. We were like sixteen year olds in Oklahoma. Like we didn't know, but we would just like do it. We knew like if you just fucking, it With would it. give you. So we let's do poppers in chemistry class. Nobody's touching each other at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and now I'm and now I'm teacher. fucking sober, so I can't do them. Yeah. Oh, poppers, poppers like a drug. That's what I was wondering why you did them. I will. I'm not like sober like that. I just don't drink and I don't do drugs, but I smoke pot every once in a while. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and I do poppers while I'm having sex sometimes. Okay. For me, like I'm a, v- I'm very strict on like uh, on like because a lot of people and I don't hate any on anybody's like journey, like whatever, right? Like if you had a bad problem with drugs and you figured out how to drink and smoke weed and you don't do fucking hard drugs anymore. So yeah. for me, I've tried all the like, don't do this, but do this, do weed, do this, don't go drink just a little bit. And yeah. I always go back. Yeah. So for me, like, like the only relief that I get ever is sex, caffeine and nicotine. And I don't really know why those don't ever, you know, slide me back towards, you know, the sweet embrace of heroin, but yeah. you know, it doesn't. Yeah. So poppers is one of those things where I'm like, it's just worth it not to. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. you know, cause then all of a sudden you're going to be carrying them around. You're going to be like about to go on stage being like, <laughs> yeah, I go through them. Like, you guys know <laughs> you fucking put- Austin. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, how loose Austin. I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. fucking great. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I've been trying to think about which rules apply to me and I've realized that I need to go back to your style of, of sober because uh-huh. uh, mine is well, like, yours is, you've been drinking for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And I'm saying I need a sweet return Yeah, yeah because yeah. I just, I've just been waking up so sad. Do you know that it's, you've talked about it a lot. It's that feeling when you wake up and you're, it's just in, just pure anxiety oh, and you're like, when I what was did dr- I do? What did I do? What did I do? Every mm-hmm. single morning when I would wake up, I would I would wake up like, <gasps> oh, like <gasps> <gasps> what did I do last night? And I'd like go out to my living room and I'd like go talk to the lesbians I'd lived with and I was like, what did I do last night? And they're like, you, we came home at eight o'clock and you were like black out drunk asleep. Um, and then you didn't do anything. I was like, oh, okay. I you still guys, feel have, bad. You guys ever done Xanax? Yeah. No, my therapist told me when I was 21 years old that I was clearly an addict and he would never prescribe it to me. Good. It's really addictive. So yeah. Xanax, like, I would obviously, like, get blackout drunk, but, like, Xanax is a t- different blackout. Like, I've, dude, I've, 
Because the thing is, is you'll take Xanax and black out, and then you're just operating. It so like you'll take more Xanax. I have like times where like I've been blacked out for like a week and been at the UPS store working, and like I and then you come to and you're like, what the fuck? Like you just have no idea. Have you ever had the type of blackout? Because sometimes people talk about blackouts and they mean like they wake up and they don't remember anything. Have you ever had the blackout where you're walking or something's happening and you come to you're like, I yeah. don't know where I've been for the last like day. Yeah, there's like a weird point where the Xanax will wear off, and then but you're just like doing something. And like, I don't know how that works in the head, but like where you just all of a sudden kind of like come back to and you're like, oh, fuck. Like it's it's yeah, it's me and my strange. friends were all drinking and doing Molly during the pandemic. Like I was doing Molly like every single weekend, like a ton of it. Fuck yeah. Best Molly I'd ever had in my entire life. This fucking drug dealer. He had the oldest cat in America. And he um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. What he said. And, I had, <laughs> and he just had like buckets of Molly and um. And we would just do it all the time. And when I, we were in the park, fucked up. And I like, I remember going into the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, we were in my friend's apartment. And I was like mm -hmm. walking in his hallway. And I had like fully pissed my pants at the park. They were like putting me into the shower. I had no recollection of how we got there, like at all. It was yeah. the scariest thing in the world. One time I came to in the middle of my friend's apartment and I started screaming. And they were like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Because like, to them, they, it's just no, like, oh, Dylan's his, just hanging out. And then you're like, fuck! Him yeah. and his girlfriend were holding me down. I just remember him being like, put on Maggie Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, yeah, just Maggie Rogers music videos playing. as I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Oh my God. How long have you not been drinking? Then? It'll be two years um, in about a month and a half. Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Everything my whole life changed. It's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's just, it's bad. Like, and like for me doing comedy, I mean, I've never done comedy fucked up but i can't imagine like having to like being on stage looking at your ex-boyfriend and being like guess who doesn't have a fucking job <laughs> <laughs> that's what i used to do black yeah, that sounded like age. pretty real that sounded like a like a you pulled that from yeah. real experience yeah i like that yeah i yeah 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 i've just been tipsy uh past couple months on stage which i said i'd never do so i'm already breaking my own fucking rules but you mm. walk off stage i'm like what did i say yeah. Yeah. Or like what one thing that I that I hear other comics say that like to me would scare me is like I have that sweet spot that I like to be in before I get up. And it's like for some people, it's like I like to have three beers or I have one cocktail or whatever. But like eventually that's going to it's going to alter. You can't if you go up almost every night and every night you think your sweet spot is three drinks. Eventually yeah. three drinks is going to be six or whatever and then it's like the thought of like what if you're in a rush and you get there and you got to go up and you don't have your sweet spot does that mean that you suck like it's like it's scary to think like i have to have a concoction where i feel a certain way in order to do well when people would say that originally i would be like no you really don't like it's so much better and now when i hear people say that, i'm like do whatever you gotta do you know what i mean like you have no like it's, yeah you, you'll never convince them that like actually that's not your sweet spot it, it is a right. crutch right. yeah but yeah it, it is, I think it's this mindset of I'm not okay, but if I have this, I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just don't know what that is. So you guess I'm like, no, I'm okay. No, I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm good. Exactly. I think of it as like trying to match the energy of the audience. Yeah. If I'm going up at like a late night spot and the whole sure. audience is drunk, I don't want to be the sober one because I'm just going to want to run through all my material and it's going to piss me off that they're not paying attention as much. For sure. But if I'm having a little fun, I had a drink and I'm just like loose, then I can play with them in a better way. Yeah. Whereas like I could do a show totally sober at like seven o'clock yeah. where everyone is at my level. You know what I mean? For sure, dude. And I've seen comics who are like well in the bag murder because they just have zero inhibition at all. They're just having fun. And like, it, like it's not that it's not useful at all. Like I, I, I'm, I'm it's just envious, not sustainable. envious of it yeah. sometimes. Well, do you guys yeah. ever get frustrated with like drunk audiences more than you think a, uh, a comic that drinks does? Sure, I mean, probably. Yeah, I mean, they'll walk I off and be like, this fucking audience. And it's like, that person is usually, you go like, are you sure it was the audience? Or it's not you? No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, like, the audience is drunk, and you're more frustrated with the audience because they're drunk than a drunk comic would I be. With I them. Heard, this is, like, a little woo-woo for me, but, like, I'm like, I think it's, like, if they're fully blackout drunk, if they're whatever the job is to be in control of the room. Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't matter what they are. It's my job to get them on board. 
You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't really ever think about them being drunk, to be honest. I'm yeah. always thinking about myself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, wait, there's an audience. I only hear the laughter. Other than that, I'm like, you guys could all be fucking killed. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nothing to me. Yeah, you guys could all be fucking tape recorders playing a laugh track. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, as long as you laugh at the time. When yeah. people are like, I do this to make humans laugh. I'm like, we do this for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. I don't do that. For well, you. yeah, no. because like I have like two. There's two wolves in me, right? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Well, no, but like there's there's the part of me that's like more than aware of the fact that like. You have to have a certain level of maybe not diagnosable, but narcissism to a degree to think I can go on stage and entertain people. I'd be great at that yeah. and be the center of attention. But then there's also like there's like the spiritual like part of me that like it is a cool thing to be like like some people buy tickets. They buy drinks. They spend one hundred and fifty dollars. They got a babysitter. It's yeah. the only night they got out and yeah. I got to make them laugh. And yeah. that's great. That's a much smaller wolf than the other wolf, but it is still a reality. That you know? works so much better for me right before I go on stage. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'll be like, every single person here paid to be here. They want to have a good time. Like, just show them a good time. Right. But when I'm on stage, I'm like, fuck you, pigs. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. You, you can have that thought, but then if you get out there and they're weird, you're like, fuck you guys, dude. Yeah, fuck your stupid whore babysitter that your yeah. husband's fucking, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you guys wasted your fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have any questions for us? No, now I feel bad. I should should I have questions for you guys? Yes. I am curious because uh, you mentioned riding in the car with your mom, listening to Nick Lachey, and like, and like talking about being in uh, the locker room. Yeah. When did you come out? When did both of you come out? I was like really in denial about being gay, even though it was like me and twelve girls slamming down the hallways every single day. I was like, I'm not gay. Yeah. Um, and then like senior year, I remember being like, okay. I'm gay. And I just, like, said it out loud and I was like, all right, should I tell people? And then I remember the next day I went to this class and people were like, do you hear that? Like this kid from the grade above came out in college. And I was like, he's a fucking faggot. And I was like, I'm not coming out. <laughs> uh, and, and then, Wait, where was this? Massachusetts. Ew. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, like that's I'm, fucking gross. I remember being like, I'm not telling anybody. And then I was like, I'll, I'm just going to wait until after high school. And then right after high school, I like, I was like, I'm gay. Yeah. I don't need, now that I'm not legally required to be around these fucking animals. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gay. I feel like that's a lot of people. They're yeah. like, once high school's over. I feel like, well, I was talking to a 21 year old recently and he was casually being like, yeah, that's gay. And I just was like, are people saying gay again? He's like, kind of, yeah. And I was like, yeah. That's actually, to me, cool because that means that it's not an oppressive thing anymore because there's like 12 year olds coming out of the closet yeah. and like being gay and just I can't I watched Goosebumps the new one and there was a, just a an openly gay character who was just like tr trying to trying to find love and I was like that's crazy it is me. wild it is like yeah. I can't fathom it yeah I came wild it's a watch the shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> I oh, Campbell soup commercials got two gay yeah. black dads <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> I go, they're, cut that, cut uh, are that. they, are yeah, they yeah. related? I was going, are these people related? Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, I went to college and then I came out. Got I, it. I went to okay. college. Hair school. Hair school. And then I came out. You came out after hair school? After hair school. Hilarious. And then I went back to college. Seems like hair school and coming out could have been just kind of like a package deal. I, I definitely that was like when I started hanging out with gay people mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, gay people are all different types of people. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was weird, a guy like, in the Navy who was there. His name was Stetson. And that man was a man. I bet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember the first time I was like, wait, they make him like that. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> and that guy, and I, I kept on like, and that guy's gay, right? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Like, <sighs> all right. I am gay and I'm fine with it. All yeah, right. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I might be that kind of gay because we we, like, I went to a Catholic private high school, so we had gay kids, but man, did they they not say it. But everybody knew Ashton Doyle was gay. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. same thing. All of his friends are the hot girls, and he's never hooking up with any of them. Yeah. And, like, it's very obvious, but then, like, I was raised where, like, I remember being in freshman theology class and, like, arguing with this kid, Jake, about whether being gay was, like, a choice or not. And he was like, why would God, if he <laughs> created all of us, make people who are, like, defying, like, him? And I remember being like, you're a fucking idiot. And it was so weird. But yeah, I also why understand. would he make them? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, why would he yeah, make yeah. them? Yeah. Why would they? Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. is he making gay? 
hey, what you making over there, God? <laughs> yeah. He's just like putting a doll. He's like, these ones are going to fuck each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like, God, what are you doing over there? Fucking nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Sucking, sucking dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got him the 69. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's going gonna to have a hard life. Sometimes I forget <laughs> that people are actually still homophobic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude. Last night at my show, not my show, but I was up on stage and I was telling my new joke and I said the... The, the, the hate crime joke and I said like oh you know I was tied to the back of a pickup truck and dragged around town with a sign that says God hates gays and some guy from the back was like finally there's justice and, was, and I, everyone was like whoa and I it, it was so crazy that I just started hysterically laughing on stage holy yeah, shit yeah 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 that whoa. is whoa yeah it was crazy what, was play, what, should, should, what should you have said uh, I la well last night what I chose to say was I was like that's crazy and then I started making fun of what he looked like and then I actually was like you should actually kill yourself <laughs> yeah and then, and then I just all of a sudden was like and actually I want to make everyone I go because they were like, kind of weird when I told them to kill themselves yeah. and I go no guys like my friend killed herself when we were thirteen so when I say it I really mean it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of got them on board <laughs> yeah that's dude that's the weird thing about Austin specifically is Austin is <laughs> such a like blue liberal weird place but we're still in texas yeah so there's a guy who's like fuck yeah i hope that was a chevy they dragged you from you know <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it, it better and then the other guy toyota tundra <laughs> or yeah. some shit like that and all the way that didn't happen you know but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is like a great joke you know but yeah. um yeah Huh. All right. Yeah, I don't know what I would have said. I would have been like, justice, I was really, justice, justice. Well, you know what I was really mad about? Because the like, cops in Austin right now are the hottest cops that I've oh ever seen God, in my life. Oh, my God, no, honestly. They, 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 they trotting they, on horses and uh, shit, too. It's, no, but, it's like, they fired nice. all of them during the pandemic because we, I think we were one of the defund the police yeah. people. So, but then we had so much crime that they hired a whole new... Rookies and they are. It's all the so hot. It's all the. It's what what it is is all the like hot young dumb guys who during all of the defund things were like, no, I want to be a police officer. Yeah. Oh, it's all just a bunch. It's all just a bunch of like hot white Republican guys who are like, I'm gonna protect. I'm going to protect my state. And then they're like, ride horses down Sixth Street. And they're like, all right. <laughs> I, I do love seeing a group of cops and being like, hi boys. <laughs> it's so fun. All right. Well, we just have one final, have one question. final question, and it is kind of the the hallmark of the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you were a gay man, okay, uh, would you rather have sex with me or Dylan? Hmm. But, but, but. <laughs> it is. I guess. I guess that's important. Yeah. He is a oral top. Okay. And I guess I'm an oral bottom, mm -hmm. but I guess that's just a bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So oral bottom means you like giving head and you bottom. Yeah, but I love to do that at the same time. Oh, okay. I had to think about the yeah. dynamic. Yeah, a little spit roasting yeah. action. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like to help two people out at the same time. So, <laughs> so <You're> a giver. <laughs> so here's the thing. More taker. <laughs> Just based on my interactions with both of you, Dylan seems a lot more passionate about what he does. <laughs> yeah. Which leads me to well, believe practice makes perfect. I played sports my whole life. You know, yeah. I think I would have to go. Uh, he just seems like he's shack. so. I would have to <laughs> make me a reservation at the suck shack. shack. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, also, Colton, I don't know if you're still doing this joke, but Col that is, that's funny you said that because Colton has this incredible joke where he's like, what I want to be happening while in sex is like. A gift. It, he wants to feel like a gift. He wants to <laughs> be laying down with some disgusting old man behind him going, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just feel the sweat on the back of my neck. Just feel, thank you. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, yeah. thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. This thank is very fun. Yeah, do you want to plug it. anything? Um, Blowing my, up online. Follow the guy. My Instagram. Yeah, Matt Ross Comic. That's really. You comic. post a lot of funny sketches. Uh, yeah, I got sketches on Good Girl Studios. I don't know. Good Girl Studios film. I don't know what the fuck. It's in my bio if you make it there. And uh, um, We have a large gay male following. We'll make it there. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you that would be great. Yeah. Follow me. <laughs> wait, a wait, lot wait, wait, of wait. my following online is gay males and white women. I love that. And constantly commenting going uh, OnlyFans question mark. Only fans question <laughs> no, mark. nobody asked me about OnlyFans, but they, I mean, I have a few select guys who anytime I post a story or a picture that's of just like me, especially if it's like one where I got my legs out or anything slutty yeah. at all. It's, you know, let me suck your feet. Like, all you know, Whoa, like feet. a few that like I've never opened the message request, but they're yeah. just I mean, it's just full of. Mm -hmm. And would flattering. you be comfortable showing your bald eagle tattoo? 
I'll show it just because you guys have gotten me. It's this is so exciting. <laughs> it's a whole. Uh, it's a whole. <gasps> Whoa! Oh! So that's the bald eagle and a snake, and then yeah, I got. It says for the grace on your tattoo. For the grace. Were you Damn, in the you have Satan on your on your fucking chest, dude. Yeah, it's kind of like a the uh, like angel devil kind of thing on either side. Cool. You know? I'm gonna yeah. get Satan tattoo. I'm just I show up with your exact same tattoo, <laughs> bro. Literally. I, the whole thing with American traditional tattoos is I see tattoos on other people and I go, that's sick. I'm going to get that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are you running out of room? Um, uh, no, I got plenty of room. The problem is like my artist in Florida charges me nothing because he's my golf buddy and, and my friend. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you I'm have not... any on your ass? No. No. I wasn't yeah. going to ask. To I do have Dean showed us his ass. He, okay. Yeah. Just, if, if you wanted to, no, Dean, no, Dean did no. it. Dean hey, showed us. Doing that. He's got nah. followers. You know, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being in the podcast. Thank you guys for having me. This was very fun. Yeah. I think I'm going to get a tattoo on my ass. Get it. Okay. Dylan P. Carlino. Colton Dowling. The Jimmy Clifford. Follow the Instagram. Someone bad. Follow and subscribe on YouTube, pigs.